Uh, well, of course, I'm going to begin by asking. I mean, Pitch Perfect was a huge kind of success amongst fans. It's got it's sort of already gained a real kind of following. I'm just wondering, what can those fans expect of Pitch Perfect Two? What's what's new? What's different about this sequel? Um, well, what is different is that you will see or find the Bellas uh, operating on a much larger stage. Um, uh, literally, I mean, they'll end up competing at the World Championships um, against the best in the world, as opposed to just the best in America. Um, but I think also you just will see a more rounded out um, series of character arcs. I mean, for instance, you know, Fat Amy has a love story, um, which I think you don't see very often with, with characters like hers. Um, I think you'll see more comedy in the second one than you did in the first one. Um, you will see a much bigger and more expansive riff off. Uh, so everything is just bigger um, and better and responding a lot to many of the things that the fans love from the first one. Because I mean, in the first film, they were really the underdogs, you know, and even yeah. Becca came into the group as a real underdog. And mm -hmm. in this, they've got a kind of following. They've already, mm -hmm. I was just wondering how the kind of dynamic changes and did that make it almost harder in, in terms of kind of creating a narrative when they've, you haven't got that kind of inherent underdog story? In yes. It? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> great, great question. Um, no, you, you've literally hit uh, on exactly on the single biggest challenge for us when we were developing the second one was how do you, you know, the Bellas function the best and the comedy functions the best when these girls are underdogs. And uh, when we last saw them at the end of Pitch Perfect One, they have just had this triumphant national championship winning performance and everyone is in love with Barton Bellas, we had to immediately find a way to lay them low and, and make them underdogs again, which I think we do within the, <laughs> within the first five minutes of the movie in a pretty um, big way. So when would the idea to, to make? Um, when did the idea come about to make this sequel? Was it sort of was it there, these ideas in your head sort of from right from the beginning, or did it take the kind of the support of the fans and, and the success of the movie for you guys to go right? Maybe we should make a second. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it was our desire, Elizabeth and I and our producing partner Paul Brooks' desire to, you know, get into a sequel pretty quickly after the first one opened. So the, the first one opened October. The DVD release for the holidays in December around Christmas time, and immediately became one of the hottest selling DVDs in the market, which shocked everyone, including ourselves. Once that happened, everyone started saying, "Oh wow, that's interesting." I think the studio, when they saw the data come back on the actual true unit sales of the DVD, that's when everyone really started saying, "Okay, maybe a sequel's justified." Um, and then you kind of combine that with you know the global phenomenon of the cup song and everyone walking around quoting lines uh, you know on the street to people and it kind of took on I mean the analogy we've used we, we hope uh, is an apt analogy is kind of the um, uh, uh, Austin Powers analogy so the first Austin Powers did okay in theaters but it was after it, went, it, it was kind of in the public zeitgeist that you had every idiot guy walking around saying, yeah, baby, and all that kind of stuff. And that's when you knew the film had taken on kind of a larger pop cultural significance. I was definitely one of those idiots as well. Yeah, as was I. <laughs> I still uh, am, sadly. <laughs> and I was wondering, I mean, in regards to, to working obviously so closely with, with your wife, Elizabeth, I mean, how, how was that dynamic for you? Because I mean, obviously you're producer director throughout the day. Was it easy to kind of go home in the evening and have that disconnect and become husband and wife again? Or, or, how, how was, or was this project, did it almost consume all of your time for the majority of the kind of project? Yeah, I, you know, it's... It is all consuming, like it, it is a 24 hour thing. You, you you do go home at the end of the day and you're still, you know, dealing with, grappling with challenges that present themselves that day on the set or challenges that are gonna, you're gonna face the following day. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have two small children. Uh, her, her mom was living with us down in Louisiana to help out with the kids. And um, so, y your children in particular have a way of immediately kind of distracting you from whatever nonsense you were dealing with on set that day. Um, so it was, you know, it was surprisingly pretty um, even keeled and non-dramatic. And it must have been pretty great as well to work so kind of, to collaborate so closely with her in the sense that the producer and the director need to have a very strong, stable kind of relationship. And this yeah. is your wife. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. that must have been quite helpful, I suppose, in kind of being able just to say what you, whatever you want and kind of mm -hmm. be very comfortable saying whatever you want. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we, by virtue of being husband and wife and having been together as long as we have, you know, we have a, I think like a lot of people in our situation, we have, um, 
you know, oftentimes a nonverbal ability to communicate, you know, there, there'll be times that she'll do a certain take and maybe look over at me and I'll kind of like shrug my shoulders and she'll know, eh. And, and there's other times when I'll, you know, she'll, she can tell by how I'm laughing that that might have, you know, that really worked. And then on my end, you know, it's, it's nice. I have so much trust in her and I, and I kind of know exactly what she's going to do oftentimes before she does it that I don't have to kind of be, you know, super verbal and demonstrative about anything. I can, you know, you kind of sit back and watch it unfold. And in regards to the tone of the movie, I mean, it's a, it is quite a subversive, very kind of feminist movie. Mm -hmm. And yet, at the same time, it abides quite confectionate and quite affectionately, sorry, to kind of the, the tropes of the competition genre. So it's almost got, a, it's almost conventional and quite unique in the same regard. And I was wondering how you go about sort of striking that, that balance between the two. <laughs> um, well, the tone and striking the tone is the single most important thing that we do on Pitch Perfect. And, and, and if I said on Pitch Perfect 1, I still believe it to be the case, if we were 10% off in either direction of that movie um, with the tone, it, it just would have not worked. It would have been something totally different. So 10% one way, it would have been glee. 10% another way, it would have been just like kind of a straight comedy with, with weird music. Um, so we, the tone is 100% the most important thing we pay attention to every day. Um, and as to how we kind of find that balance, which I think you rightly identify, I don't know how we do that exactly, but we do it. So what's your favorite sing-along song? If you had to go up and do a karaoke, what would you go straight towards? Um, if this is a setup to get me to sing, I'm not <laughs> going to sing. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't karaoke, <laughs> I don't do any of that, I hate it, so yeah. <laughs> and just finally, um, I mean, obviously, I'm sure everyone's asking you today, but Pitch Perfect Free, just wondering if there's, there's been talks already, or if you're going to wait to see how this one comes along, or what's the kind of situation at the moment with that? Yeah, I, I, you know, Pitch Perfect 2 opens in approximately, you know, on May 15th, approximately three weeks or something from now, and our entire focus is literally getting this movie out. Like, we, we just want to get the movie out. Um, I think after the release of Pitch River 2, I think we'll take stock of everything and, and see kind of where we're at. And uh, the fans will kind of dictate, I think in many ways, what the demand is or, or is not for a, for a Pitch River 3. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.